Okay, we're going to talk about a pressure density diagram. Go ahead, David, if you, if you need to do. How's it going? Well. Um, all right, we're going to, the thing about a pressure entropy diagram, uh, you need to understand the states of matter, heat and energy, and change of state. Remember, in the refrigeration cycle, the vapor compression refrigeration cycle, what's going on is a continuous change of state from vapor to liquid, liquid to vapor, vapor to liquid, liquid to vapor. You've also got uh, certain levels or stages of change. Uh, that occurs as the liquid is um, uh, evaporating in the evaporator uh, and as the vapor is condensing in the condenser. So you've got stages of change and as that's happening, that's what the pressure entropy diagram uh, helps you to measure uh, and to evaluate and so forth. So let's, let's go ahead on and, and pull that up. Like I said, this is going to be a, a quick review of what we've already covered in another lecture. Um, pressure entropy charts. Uh, now you can you can get just a raw chart, um, and uh, this is this is what the chart looks like. You can get a chart for each refrigerant, um, and if you look at how the chart is designed, think about this: the pressure entropy diagram is a graphical representation of what's happening inside the refrigeration cycle. And that's basically all it is. It allows you to measure the amount of heat uh, that's being removed in BTU per pound of refrigerant. Uh, you can measure that. You can measure usable refrigeration effect, which is what we call net refrigeration effect. You can measure your superheat uh, which is not part of the net refrigeration effect, but it's an important part of the system. You can measure uh, the heat rejection, uh, you can measure the heat of compression, or you can see the effects that heat of compression and heat from the compressor motor uh, has on the system, which is not part of, of the net refrigeration effect. So these are things that you can look at. Um, the pressure columns are, on, are the, the um, horizontal graphs here, and they are in absolute pressure. So, for example, if you've got 40 PSIA, if you want to know what your gauge pressure would be, you would subtract 15 from that, um, and then you'd get, what, 25? 25 PSI uh, G. So, just keep that in mind. Your pressure readings here are going to be absolutes. And also, you've got your temperature readings here. Uh, and remember, for any given refrigerant, uh, you can relate your pressure temperature with the temperature. So, you, uh, I mean, you can relate your pressure to a temperature correlation. So, basically, you've got a pressure temperature chart um, within the pressure entropy diagram. So, keep that in mind. Um, and, of course, the refrigerant is, the enthalpy is BTU per pound. Uh, what's the definition of enthalpy? The amount of heat contained in a substance from a starting point. Uh, and, of course, the starting point is, is over here on this side, which you could start at zero, then you've got a minus, and then, of course, you've got your pressure scale. Um, if you'll notice the lines here where it says saturated liquid, just think about this being a dome. And you've got these various lines that show different things, and it's all clumped together in a matter of speaking. Uh, but you've got these uh, um, uh, you've got these lines here that make a dome. Over here on the left-hand side is saturated liquid, and these percent lines, this 10 percent, what that is, that's 10 percent vapor remaining and 90 percent liquid. When you get over to this line, the refrigerant is completely saturated. It's 100 percent liquid. Uh, so that's what these lines are. Now, these show the stage that it goes through in the condenser. Uh, you got the 90%, what that is, that's 90% vapor, 10% liquid. That's where the, the condenser starts to reject the heat. Um, and then you've got some other things that you can look at. Um, the, the saturated vapor lines over here on this side that you can't really see, you know, that's where the liquid is boiling off in the evaporator. So you got your condenser, you got your evaporator, and then you've got what's happening in, in the center portion of the scale. Uh, now, if you look over here um, at the entropy in BTU per pound, what in the world is entropy? If you, if you read the text, you'll see that entropy has to do uh, with the uh, ratio 
of the volume of refrigerant at any given point in the vapor compression cycle and the amount of heat that that refrigerant contains. So uh, that's what the entropy is. And you've got, you see that it's measured uh, in volume and this is, uh, um, you know, cubic feet per pound. That's what that is. That's one cubic feet, um, you know, one, one cubic feet of volume. And you can measure how much heat that one cubic feet of volume contains. Now, why can we not use the, you know, the gas laws, the, you know, Dalton's law, Boyle's law, Charles' law? Why can't we use this the straight, you know, laws where you got your your constant volume, if the, if the uh, temperature remains constant and the pressure remains constant, you can calculate the uh, new volume or, you know, you, if you know one uh, or the other, whether you're dealing with temperature or pressure or volume, you can calculate the other. Well, the reason that we can't use those basic gas laws in refrigeration is because you've got changes that are constantly going on. The pressure is changing uh, as it goes through the cycle. There is a point where the pressure remains somewhat stable and the temperature remains somewhat stable, and we're going to talk about that. However, it's also you know, constantly changing and fluctuating as the heat load changes. Uh, so that's why we can't really calculate volume. Uh, you know, when you put your manifold gauges on a refrigeration system, you're going to be reading pressures, and you're going to be converting that pressure to temperature, you're going to be taking temperature measurements on your suction line and your liquid line to calculate superheat and subcooling. You're not going to be measuring volume per se. However, with the pressure entropy diagram, you can look at what's happening volumetrically. Uh, when would you need to use this and, uh, as a service technician? Probably never. This is something, if you read the first sentence in the first paragraph in chapter 18, of the textbook, it says that you know the pressure entropy diagram is used to design refrigeration systems. So if you're an engineer, you're going to design a system. You know you can use the pressure entropy diagram. So this is actually some pretty sophisticated stuff. But once you understand the vapor compression refrigeration cycle, what's happening in in, in the system, uh, and how it relates to the chart, it's not that difficult to understand the chart. Now, at any given time, I'm going to get in front of the um, get in front of the uh, um, the um, slide chart here, uh, PowerPoint. That's the word I'm looking for. At any given time, you're going to be looking you're going to be looking at a rectangular box that looks something like this. At any given time, always. If, if you're asked to plot, um, you know, a particular refrigeration system on the pressure entropy diagram, this is always what you're going to be looking at. And you've got certain regions here. You know, you've got certain things that you measure, uh, and then you're going to be looking at these things. And that's, that's, what, that's what you're going to be looking for. If you're asked to plot... No, uh, the, if you ask to plot a particular refrigeration system that's operating at any given time with a particular refrigerant, number one, you've got to have the chart for that refrigerant. You can't use just any chart. The pressure entropy diagram is made for that particular refrigerant. And then what else have you got to have to plot the, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the enthalpy or the BTU per pound or the net refrigeration effect uh, or the entropy? Uh, you know, what, what do you need to plot this? Uh, you're going to need your discharge pressure. I'm just going to abbreviate that. And you need to convert that to temperature. You're going to need your suction pressure. And you're going to need to convert that to temperature. You're going to need your um, uh, suction line temperature, superheat. Abbreviate that superheat. You're going to need your liquid line temperature. And calculate your subcooling. I'm going to abbreviate that. So if you if if you go up to a refrigeration system, you need to know the type system it is. You need to take these measurements. When you have this information here, uh, you can actually plot these other 
um, these other things on the pressure entropy diagram. So I'm going to erase this, and then we're going to we're going to go down and, and look at a couple of examples where they've actually came in and, and draw the lines. So let's go to the next slide. And this is just showing the pressure and PSI absolute. That's all this, that, that, that's what these lines are showing. Um, and of course, if these are pressures and absolutes, and you've also got your temperature scales. Now, keep in mind that most uh, air conditioning systems, comfort cooling, is going to have a, a evaporator operating temperature of about 40 degrees. And so this line here is where we're going to come in and, you know, th this is where we're going to come in and look at, um, you know, what's going on inside that system. Um, if you have uh, a medium temperature or low temperature machine, and let's say your evaporator operating temperature is minus 20 degrees, then you're going to come down here, and your box is going to be down here in this region. Uh, but either way, uh, you know, when you when you draw that um, when you draw that uh, odd shaped box there, uh, you know, you you're going to be measuring your enthalpy, which is in BTU per pound. So I'll erase this, erase this, and we'll move on to the next slide. And that's just showing the BT, enthalpy and BTU per pound of refrigerant. All right, now let's say, for example, you know, once you, uh, if, if you've got a scenario where you know how many BTU you need, uh, you all remember that first calculation that you did where how many BTUs is required 